quite a number of initiatives uh, and um, we have done we have prepared strategies and we're implementing by 2030 we will probably be one of the few countries in Africa that will be very close to carbon zero carbon um, uh, uh, neutrality uh, balance particularly in industries so um, Egypt is, 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 is going very well in that direction um, in, in, in parallel with other, as you said, the, the employment, uh, the sustainability, and under sustainability you get the recycling, the green power generation, um, whether it's solar power and so on. You know we have the largest solar power um, farm in the whole world. Aswan. And yeah. Aswan, Binyan, um, and so on. So our initiatives are quite impressive, and I think what needs to be happening is, uh, again, uh, education. We need um, we, we need very focused educational uh, initiatives into that particular sector, um, and um, in terms of funding, I think we we are fine. We are collaborating with all sorts of um, of funding uh, partners, um, uh, United Nations, um, uh, World Bank, uh, U.S. and EU development banks, um, and it's it's not only funding; it's also technology transfer. So I think we're on the right track in that space. Good to hear. Dr. Abd Salam, Egypt has ambitious plans to become a regional hub for exporting green uh, hydrogen, for green hydrogen, and to export 10 million tons of renewable energy, especially to Europe. Yes. Uh, your uh, elaboration on sure. that. Sure. Uh, green hydrogen, uh, maybe a few years ago, nobody heard of green hydrogen. True. Now, uh, both Saudi and UAE are, are competing, uh, and Egypt is probably much better positioned. Uh, the largest green hydrogen um, project is going to come out of Saudi, but you'll be very happy to know that the first country to export green hydrogen and green urea was Egypt in 1950. So we've been there all, 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 all the time and we, we, we know a lot about this particular industry. Now, technology has changed. We do have the gas, so that's what makes us, gives us a lot of advantage to, cr to generate the green hydrogen. We do have the ge geographical proximity of to course. Europe, yeah, naturally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the infrastructure. I mean, we, we already share electricity with Europe. I mean, we export electricity to our neighbors in the Levant, Eastern uh, Mediterranean, and very soon to Europe. We have excess capacity in electricity, which is amazing. Um, so we, we have all the elements. And I think one of the important achievements uh, for our government is putting together the regulatory framework. And that's a very important part of any uh, green economy initiative. You need to have the laws and regulations and the structure and the framework to protect the industry and to encourage um, users like electric vehicles. Uh, the government gi gives 50,000 Egyptian pounds um, subsidy to anybody who, cr who, who um, manufactures uh, an electric vehicle in Egypt. So every vehicle is subsidized by 50,000 Egyptian pounds if you manufacture it here. And that's huge. Um, power stations and so on. So there's a lot of initiatives that is doing well. United Nations said says in a, in a clear statement that in 2050, Egypt would, will be the second most um, environmentally friendly economy in the world. Wow. Yes, 2050. Because we're doing many, many initiatives and we take our time to put down the infrastructure and the regulations and the partnerships. Uh, but because of our... Um, um, population, education, and uh, serious commitment, this is going to happen. I hope. I mean, that's Insha the United Allah. Nations. Yeah. Inshallah. Uh, and how does the state, uh, Dr. Abdel Salem, uh, um, encourage the private sector to implement uh, clean energy projects? The private sector. Yes. Um, I guess the, 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 the clearest um, sector is the industrial. Uh, so in, in manufacturing, um, the government is encouraging transformation of machinery and, and tools and manufacturing um, um, uh, uh, infrastructure to, to com be converted into um, green energy, energy sustainable uh, resources, whether it's, um, there are factories now that run off power generated by recycled um, waste, uh, others are running on uh, compost, others are running on solar power. So um, that's one. Two, there is, I think there is two or three different um, um, uh, bonus or let's call it um, subsidies from the government and um, incentives, uh, incentives yes, in the taxation area. 
So if you're using um, recycled materials to generate power, for example, you get deductions, uh, tax deductions uh, across a number of of um, uh, of, uh, of sectors in your uh, in your, uh, in your yes. revenue. Yeah. And Dr. Absalem, Egypt has signed more than a deal and cooperation protocol with foreign investors. Uh, 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 b to implement um, a friendly environment projects in, uh, in Egypt. Could you tell us the significance yes. uh, of that? Uh, investors are mostly um, uh, motivated by profitability, obviously, and, and return on their investment. And that's... Uh, uh, yeah, the, the it's the normal. Exactly. So, so yes. So, so the the influx. Of they see Egypt as a as a and good. That's buy. what I'm trying to say. Yes, um, the potential and uh, the 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 strategy and the commitment of of both the private sector and the public sector towards achieving the the, the zero uh, emission um, by 2030, which is the COP27 commitment, uh, is very encouraging for investors. Um, having said that, um, we do have specific advantages. So we have the, the, the extra pure quartz, the sands in Sinai. Everybody knows about that, the white sands. These are extremely important for the, um, uh, for, uh, the microchip. No, microchip, microchip. the electronics, yes. The, um, uh, the Koreans are, are, are very keen on, uh, on this. So the government is developing the black sand, as you know, uh, the new black sand discoveries in the Western Desert. So our environment keeps giving us, ar the, our nature keeps giving us more opportunities, and that's what attracts investors. Yes, and uh, Dr. Absalem, uh, Egypt is pressing forward with many renewable energy projects uh, to reduce climate uh, change. Uh, um, could you tell us uh, some uh, examples of these uh, sure. renewable energy projects? Sure. We all know about the solar power in uh, Banyan and Aswan, the largest in the world. Uh, the, the good news is we are actually manufacturing the, the panels. So all the panels there are manufactured in Egypt. Um, and that's, that's great because how do we compete with China? Actually, we do in terms of quality and, and, uh, and cost in, in, in solar power panels. So that's great. Solar power, um, recy um, uh, recycling. So um, we have a number of, um, of uh, well-established Egyptian local companies now in recycling and uh, sorting, recycling, um, energy generation from waste. Uh, we do have existing industries in Egypt now, encouraged by the public sector. In terms of the public sector, uh, uh, the, the, the statewide projects such as um, transportation, around 75% of our funding uh, in, in renewable energy goes into transportation. So green transportation is uh, quite, a, quite, a, quite a focus for the, for the state, for the public sector. So uh, yeah, th that's that's few of, of the initiatives or the existing projects that Egypt is doing. And uh, uh, w we're doing it in many governorates, right? It's not just focused on one specific geographical area. It's, it's scattered uh, around uh, the country. Yes. Um, recently, Dr. Mahmoud Mohideen, uh, the UN climate change high level uh, champion for Egypt, said that the projects of national initiatives for smart and green projects in Egypt have attracted national banks and international development finance institutions to participate in their financing and uh, implementation. Your intake on that, sure. uh, sir. Um, absolutely. Um, we have uh, a number of international funding um, partners involved, like the European Bank for um, Reconstruction and Development, um, a couple of United Nations agencies as well, um, uh, World Bank, of course, and uh, Asian Development Bank um, uh, and others. Um, the significance of such partnerships is that it does not stop at financial funding. It, it more importantly, it extends into technology transfer. So our partnership with um, uh, GIZ, G -I -S -Z, which is the German um, uh, International uh, Development Agency, um, means that um, a lot of the technologies that Germany has developed, Germany generates more than 45% of its power from renewable sources by now. So by 2030, everybody else will aiming at that. Germany is, is aiming at 2025. So that's how advanced they have been. So we're, we're, we're working very closely with Germany, with US, um, and obviously, yes, as you said, it's uh, all across Egypt. Actually, the, um, the um, uh, local governance, the, minist the ministry of Hak Mahalli, the Local development, local, uh, development, local administration. Local administration, yeah. that, that ministry in particular has a budget on its own. 
So every project that extends in outside Cairo or Alexandria or the big suburban or the big centers gets, in, uh, gets funded by that particular budget to extend and extend into recycling. I go to my hometown like every couple of months and I can see uh, a lot of the... Wh 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 where is your hometown? Uh, Monofea. Okay. Yes. Where in Monofea? Tala. Okay. Yes. And um, uh, I can see, uh, having having been there uh, occasionally, is there's, there's change. Um, uh, sorting, uh, a lot of households now sort their uh, house uh, waste into glass, uh, um, uh, aluminium cans and so on. Why? Because the, the collectors um, come in different, uh, they, they aim at collecting certain items, not everything, because that's their contract. So it's yes, it's it's probably motivated by business, by pure business. But when you go up a couple of levels, you see that private sector companies have actually commissioned collectors and sorters at every level to collect uh, aluminium cans, um, glass waste, paper, and so on. And it's quite a, a good economy. It's it's a significant economy. Yes, it keeps everything clean. It it helps everybody understand what the environment is, and people can make money. So it's 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 getting there. Finally, Dr. Abdesalem, why should sustainable development go side by side uh, with friendly uh, environment uh, business? Yes, um, business is motivated by profit. Um, longer term, sustainability, as we as we discussed in COP27, it's not a choice. Environmentally, environmentally friendly choices, it's not go it's not a choice anymore. We've seen it. You know, today it's 36. Yesterday it was 26 degrees in Cairo, uh, and and we, we all feel it. So there's no turning back. Uh, going green in terms of economy, economic development, is not n why it's when. So if you're in the early adapters, you're on top of the game, and you probably can feed off the advanced economies that have got the technology. If you wait, and if you decide that this is just another fad or anything, uh, you're not going to survive as a business. Yeah. And the good thing is that we're not waiting. We, no. we have been one of the early adapters. Uh, I'm not saying we are, but I'm saying it's a, cho it's a very wise choice, and we are probably on top of our game. We started in 1950, as I said. Yeah. We, have, we have been doing green uh, urea since 1950, using green power. So we've All been right. there. We're there. We'll leave it there. Uh, and uh, on that note, uh, dear viewers, we thank on behalf of you very much, Dr. Hisham Abdesalem, the Economic Development thank Advisor. You. Great pleasure having you with us, sir. And dear viewers, please stay with us. Nile Cruz will be back. Don't go away.